The Bellagio. Caesar's Palace. The Wynn. The Mirage. And the Cosmo. These are some of the most prominent resorts in all of Las Vegas. But do you know what the least iconic resort of them all? Of course you don't, but we got you here on Ace of Vegas. It's the Ace of Vegas, the Ace of Vegas. Hey there, Spinners and Sharks, Ace of Vegas here, and I hope you're doing well. So, the Las Vegas Strip is one of the most iconic places in the world. Astronauts say it's the brightest spot on Earth, it's held the title of being the biggest gaming, entertainment, and party capital of the world, and it's also one of the hottest places on Earth. It also happens to have half of the largest 20 hotels in the world. But for every Bellagio, Caesars Palace, Mirage, Wynn, Resorts World, and Venetian, you have some properties that you just plain forget about. Now, these aren't bad hotels by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, bad hotels like Circus Circus and Excalibur tend to be even more infamous than some of the good ones. No, instead, these are properties that can be considered hidden gems, or, frankly, just properties that aren't as popular as others. Properties that don't show up in quite as many news reports or movies. Those types of properties. So if your favorite property is here on the list, don't be upset. Just consider it a gentle reminder to the rest of us that tend to miss out on the quality that is your favorite property. So I've gathered the top 11 forgotten hotels in Las Vegas so you know which properties to give a second look. Why top 11? Because as you know, I like to go even further beyond. So without further ado, here are the top 11 forgotten hotels on the Las Vegas Strip. Number 11 is the Cromwell. Cromwell is one of the smallest hotels on the Las Vegas Strip. Located just across the street from Bellagio, Las Vegas, the Cromwell is easy to miss. Its 40,000 square feet of gaming space and 188 hotel rooms just drip elegance, featuring an adults-only pool, a high-end steakhouse, and of course, a Starbucks. But it's not a prime tourist destination, and I suspect that it won't be for one reason. The fact that there are no kids allowed. Yes, the Cromwell is now a 21 and up property, and the only one of its kind on the Las Vegas Strip. So with it not being an option for most families, a much smaller property, and having it located in the shadow of one of the most iconic properties in all of Las Vegas, it's easy to miss the Cromwell, thus leaving it in the 11th place spot on our list. Coming in at number 10 is the Encore. Yes, I know everybody knows about Wynn and considers Encore to be part of the property, but unlike most hotels with a hotel, Encore is basically a whole different property. It has its own casino, its own pool, its own restaurants, it's truly standalone. And what I found is, a lot of people tend to forget about the other half of the house that Steve built. It's a bit smaller and farther back, so it's easier to pass over. But it's certainly no slouch and it's every bit as luxurious as its mainstream twin, the Wynn, if not more so. That's why Encore is low on this list. It's easy to miss, but once you find it, you never want to go anywhere else. Park MGM is one of the most polarizing properties I've ever reviewed, stayed in, or even visited. Built from the shell of the Monte Carlo from 2016 to 2018, officially Park MGM is MGM Resorts International's newest Las Vegas property. It's got a fresh, clean nature theme, a smokeless casino, and a number of entertainment and dining venues. And it doesn't stick out. The property is directly connected to Bellagio and Aria, next door to New York, New York. All highly themed, iconic hotels that some would argue are more luxurious or more budget friendly and therefore preferable. So unless you're an M-Life player, or you're heading to the T-Mobile Arena, you'll probably miss out on Park MGM. Thus, we take a walk through the park to number 9. Coming from on high, next on our list is the Link Las Vegas. Formerly the Quad, and before that the Imperial Palace, the Link is a smaller property, and though it's modern, clean, and economically viable, the Link isn't exactly the first place that Vegas goers will mention. Ironically, the Link Promenade is actually rather popular, topped off by the Link High Roller Observation Wheel. But the Link itself doesn't pop out in the Las Vegas skyline. It also doesn't have any regional variants like Harrah's or Bally's to attract more visitors. It's definitely not a bad property, it has plenty of rooms, games, and even a pool. 
but it's an easy property that can fall by the wayside. Unless you're a Vegas veteran or a Caesars player, the link is just a cheap spot that pops up on Expedia from time to time, and the 8th place choice on our list. Ironically, the hotel in a desert, named after a desert, is the next pick on our list. The Sahara, or the SLS, or the Old Sahara, is a fine property. It's easy to walk around, I like the decor, it's reasonably priced, and it's a bit quieter and more relaxing than your average strip property. But it's just a ways up the strip. The north side of the strip is all but destitute, and as a result, it's not fun to visit. That alone makes it harder to get visitors to the property and the lack of neighbors can also be a point against it, since you don't even have the benefit of that place next to the Sahara to go from. In fact, the only notable neighbors of Sahara that come to mind directly are the Strat and, well, some properties are better left unvisited. So that puts Sahara at our number seven. Here's an odd one. Did you know that there's a property seated in the shadow of the Bellagio and the Cosmo in Las Vegas properties? I did, but I never remember it until I walk by. This is the Jockey Club. The Jockey Club is barely a hotel. In fact, it's actually a condo and timeshare property. So it definitely doesn't get the press of larger properties like Mirage, Caesars, Cosmo, and Winget. But, I mean, look, close your eyes and think of one feature of the Jockey Club that makes it stand out from the crowd. If you can, put a timestamp in the comment section and tell me about what it is. If I like it, I'll check it out on an upcoming visit. But until then, the Jockey Club rides number six. Just past the halfway point, Waldorf Astoria is the next property on our list. Previously known as the Mandarin Oriental, Waldorf Astoria is a gorgeous, 47-story luxury hotel property. It's another casino-less hotel and instantly falls back in the memory of most Vegas visitors, specifically the gamblers. Which is ironic given that it's right next door to the world-famous Aria Hotel and Casino and just across the way from the Cosmopolitan itself, two very popular gaming destinations. Also, it's not always budget-friendly, and in a competitive environment like Las Vegas, that makes it an easier property to overlook. Luckily, Hilton's other Vegas Strip properties are a little more distinct, specifically the big red one next to the win. Regardless, that leaves the 5-star World of Astoria at 5th place on this list. Bolo Towers is, once again, a hybrid hotel timeshare condominium property. It's got a similar problem to the Jockey Club in that despite its prime location on the Strip, it's harder to find. It's just across the street from Waldorf Astoria, ironically, but it doesn't physically open its doors on the Strip directly. Instead, it's partially hidden behind a Strip Mall. It's still an easy trip to the Strip, the hotel is nice enough, and it's family friendly and all. There's nothing really wrong with it, but without a bustling casino, flashy shows, or any special theming to bring in the looky loos, you're probably not going to keep the property on your radar when you book, firmly wedging Polo Towers at a number 4 spot. The bronze medal is awarded to Tropicana. Just looking at the exterior of this place is enough to elicit a meh. But the TV gave me the impression that we said meh. M-E-H. Meh. Tropicana is a Hilton property, meaning it's run by a regular-ass hotel chain, and it has pretty generic theming in older rooms. Its location isn't horrible, it's firmly a South Strip property, but it's surrounded by some of the most famous and infamous MGM hotel resorts, so it's pretty easy to lose the trap in the shuffle. Once again, unless you're a loyal Hilton or Trap player, you probably won't be staying there, you won't be visiting it, and you won't be playing there. Thus, the trap is an easy one to forget. Our runner-up for the most forgettable hotel on the Las Vegas Strip is the Westgate. Technically, I'm cheating a bit here because it's mildly off-strip, but it's adjacent enough for it to count. Kind of in the same vein as Rio, the Virgin, or the Oyo Hotels. Just down the street from the Sahara Las Vegas and across from the Las Vegas Country Club, the Westgate is a 2900-room behemoth. Connected to the Strip by the Las Vegas Monorail, Westgate has famously held the record for largest hotel in the world until 1990, has been the site of several scandals, and has survived nearly half a dozen name changes. So what makes the Westgate so forgettable? Partially because it's not located on the Strip proper, or even downtown. It doesn't even make a unique shape in the Vegas skyline, and gosh darn it if it isn't just another Hilton hotel in Vegas. I honestly hadn't remembered that Hilton had such a death grip on Las Vegas until I started doing this list. It's also located on the cursed north side of the Strip, 
So unless you set out to visit the West Gate, you probably won't give it a second thought on your trip, which is why it holds the penultimate spot on our list. Before we move on to the final forgettable hotel in Las Vegas, here are a few honorable mentions. And the final hotel on our list is Trump International, Las Vegas. Yeah, I'll probably get some flack for this one, but I've legitimately forgotten that this property exists in general, several times. Despite being 622 feet of gold and steel, Trump Tower isn't the very first property on my list or anyone's list to visit while you're walking the strip. It's located in a good enough location, close to Resorts World and Win, and would be their direct competitors if it had one thing. A casino. That's right, despite having several casinos to his name at the time, the former president and his best friend Phil Ruffin elected not to add a casino to the 1200 room resort. Which is bizarre, given that Trump Resorts did indeed have a Nevada gaming license to their name. Also, it's half a block off the strip, on the struggling north end of Las Vegas Boulevard as well, doing further damage to its ability to attract visitors. So, with a lousy location, no casino, no residencies, no shows, minimal dining, and no theme to speak of, it's clear that even a spectacular five-star property can fall to the wayside when vacation planning if it doesn't stick in the memory of non-guests. Winning this hotel top honors on our list. Alright there, Spinners and Sharks, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed today's review and found it informative, I'd appreciate a like, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Are the hotels we forgot about the hotels that you frequent? Or is there another property that's so forgettable that we missed it on our list? Whatever your thoughts may be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Till next time friends, this is Ace of Vegas signing out, and I'm wishing you all strong hands, and of course, happy spinning you guys. Viva, Ace of Vegas. 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 Viva,